I love those little re, re. Oh, that's great. How are you guys doing today? I am doing fucking great. This is a great breakdown. This is a great song, actually. Dominator by The Browning. I think their guitar player used to work at Ormsby. I met him once. What's that? What's falling? Is that my tuna? Okay, so the tuna just popped. That was weird. The tuna just popped and flew off. Wish I could actually see that. Let's watch that back in slow motion. Imagine I had caught it. That'd be like a viral video if I did like the TikTok thing, which I fucking never would do. I've had a few people ask already in streams. Do you guys going to do TikTok? The answer is no. Sorry. Only using uh, platforms that I believe in. And I don't believe in TikTok. Sorry. Not my thing. How are you guys? My name is Tyler. Welcome to the Amsim Universe. I'm checking out a new set of pickups. Thank you so much to Tommy at EMG. Uh, for this uh, wonderful set of pickups. Uh, I actually just reached out to him to for a recommendation. And I haven't actually dealt with uh, EMG in a while. Uh, was an artist over there for a little bit. Uh, a little a few years. And then uh, just sort of when I went. Uh, when stopped doing Honest Amsterdam reviews. Um, I just didn't have the need for pickups etc. So. Uh, fast forward to current, I was asking him, just asking him for recommendations because I don't honestly know my arm from my asshole when it comes to like bass, uh, five string bass bars. You know, like I don't, I didn't, I, I went to look up their line and there is a ton of bass bars. This is the Dave Ellison set. Uh, it was a surprise to me. I didn't request it. He just sent it on over. Thank you again, Tommy. You're the best and you know, you're the best. So that's rad. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you here. So we're going to be chilling out, playing some bass today, going over some premium bass plugins that you may not necessarily have heard of today. Um, I usually, when I play bass just for myself, I just want to make it known that my, the, the main bass plugin that I use pretty much all the time is the Nambrini Audio Black Ice Beta Gamma. I use it all the time. Almost nothing but for my personal own personal use. And this one right here. Uh, this is the GK amplification 3 pro and this is something i use um for a while i used this on like everything i did now audified it's weird if you've never heard of audified before this won't be that surprising because you've never heard of the company before but if you've heard of them before it's really weird 
I'm not going to say it's not weird what happened over there because it's kind of strange. Their main guy, one of their main guys, um, left the company. And with him, he took all of his, all of the products that, all of the products that I guess were his idea or stuff that he was the product manager. I'm not exactly sure what his full capacity was at Audified. But when he left the company, he took a lot of his stuff with him. Like he took a bunch of his stuff, like multi-drive pedal pro that no longer exists. That sucks because that plugin was fucking cool. Inside one plugin, there was like 15 different drive pedals and it was awesome. They were all really well modeled. And then you had, um, what was it? Uh, Ampline, uh, sorry, Ampline 2 Pro, uh, sorry. Ampline 2 Pro Rock Essentials Pack was also like staggeringly good for like the Vox they put in there and everything else they had and there's really good. And all of a sudden it just goes poof, just gone. It's gone. That's really strange to me. That's the second time now we've heard about a plug-in uh, stuff. This is a beast of a base, and that is exactly its name. Let's get on point. This is um, this is Derek, aka the Black Beast. If you don't know who Derek Lewis is, well, uh, this is my homage to Derek Lewis. This thing is just an absolute monster. I got this base for a song and a dance, and through some parts, through some friends at Hipshot. Thank you so much to Hipshot for the nice tuners on this. Thank you so much. Very much the tuners and the bridge. Hipshot. Thank you so much to Tommy at EMG for the pickups. And now let's see how she sounds, shall we? I, it took a little bit to get the heights. We're going to be tinkering with the heights on this bad boy today as we go. Nice. Hold on. Now we got to get a decent punchy low end. No, let's just go with something clean. Combo power. Not overly bright right yet. Cool. Let's bring this down a little tiny bit more so we can really get into the what we're doing here. Um, it's been a little bit since I've used this plugin. But for a while, it was like just all I could use. And it's a great plugin. Studio session clean. All right. Level's pretty hot there. Let me bring it back. Too low. Yeah. Kind of a bit of a... I kind of feel like it needs to go down a little bit. Let's do that. And let me see what which okay we're gonna go with just the uh this is just the bridge pickup cool that sounds pretty good to me but first I just got I'm going to go with something that I'm like extraordinarily familiar with that I could not screw up. I want to know exactly what the pickups are giving me. So I'm going to go to a bass amp that maybe I'm probably more familiar with than any bass amp ever created. This is the uh, SHB one. This is 100% free. And then I'm going to couple it with a cabinet at some point here. But for now, I just want to hear I'm going to go through a couple of easy components just to, just to hear what the pickup is giving me. A little buzz action going on there. I want to pull back the gain and we'll go up the volume a little bit. And as we go, I turned on the bright. I want the deep, maybe the shape. There's a little buzz in the background. Is that just this, or is that giving me that in the DI as well? Hold on. Doesn't seem to be giving me anything in the DI, so that's got to be involved here. Let's turn the bright off. And this again, this is just the uh, this is just the bridge. Sorry for the clunk in there. I'm playing with a pick today because I really want to play with a pick. 
um, on this base. This base feels like a picking base rather than a uh, than a than a than a finger like a finger play base. There's also a compressor that I'm going to try out today. This is a brand new free compressor from uh, from v uh, sorry from Softube. This is free. You can go get this. I think for a limited time for absolutely nothing. I've had set on base P style preset. That sounds pretty cool. And now again, let's and now let's go all Brit all sorry, all neck pickup. Cool, let's try them both together. I can't remember that. I'm guys, and I'm not going to make this the most ex exciting session of your lives because I'm. I really feel like I'm just lacking when it comes to trying to get something, trying to get a really good session out of base. I'm trying my best out here. You know what I mean? I'm actually a lot more confident um, as a bass player when I'm not playing bass in a live session. And now. I wonder what that 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 there's just that little bit of of, of how many big buzz buzz there. I wonder where that's coming from exactly. Does that go away if I have an IR though? I've I've never I don't think I've ever heard that ever before out of this amp. So I'm I'm kind of confused right now. That's a little bit a little something there. Does that also exist here? Not enough hot, not enough top end there, I don't think. Some sort of sizzle. What about this one? No, it's all in the amp. I don't I don't really know where that's coming from. I don't think I recall ever hearing that little tail of whatever that is. And it's there no matter how much gain that I throw up here. Although it becomes more present there. Very interesting. Let's turn all the switches off. It's still there. Interesting. I have to figure that out later. Not that it's this. I've used this man a thousand times and never heard that noise. It's weird. Okay, we're gonna get rid of that for now. We're gonna move along. It's okay. Not a big deal. Uh, one of the. I just. I'm kind of enjoying this as a starting point. This is our starting point for now. Then this is a Galleon Kruger uh, from Brain from Brainworks licensed 800 RB. This thing is really cool. It's got some really nice presets. We're gonna play around with some of the presets and this bass and just kind of chug along. I know now what the pickups are giving me at very least. And uh, listen to some random ass tunes in the background. I've been listening to a lot of bulk and ska lately. Don't judge me. It is what it is. That's a big, it's a lot of low end there i'm wondering what which pickup is delivering me that weird sort of bloated low endy yeah that's not i like that and then what about up here i think one of them is gonna have to go up or down i'm just gonna have to figure that out as we go here it's not a big deal though i i like that i like that i like having new challenges so we're gonna play along here. This is uh, this is a plugin you can get right now, if I'm not mistaken, for like twenty dollars. Let's get some uh, compression in there. And you're like, ah, we need some distortion. Let's go now. Uh, yeah, we're going to do some distorted bass today, a little bit of it anyways. And one of the things we're going to be using is the Baus. And this is based on a Marshall Governor. And if you're not familiar, a little bit of a piece of trivia for you. Now, Tim Comerford 
plays bass for a little band called Rage Against Machine. He's also played for, you know, Audio Slave and all the other various Rage infused products, uh, projects, Prophets of Rage, whatever you want to call it. Um, cut hair. <sighs> Get off me. Um, okay, so here's a bit of trivia for you guys. And I'm thinking we're going to do a tone talk on this fella at some point real soon. Uh, Tom Morello, it's easy. They've already given you everything you need to get the Tom Morello bass sound right in uh, in archetype uh, Tom Morello. Everything's right there. You can do it all right in that suite. No no bones about it. But if you're looking for rage bass tones, now a bit different. What you're going to need there is a sort of collection of products. And we're not going to make that specific rig. But if there's interest, I'll do it in a later date for sure. If there's if there's interest out there and if you guys want to do it, I would love to do that at a later date and do the Tim Comerford Tone Talk. Now, anybody who knows Tim Comerford is interested in his bass tone at all. If you're like, just like, I know who he is, but I don't know what gear he uses. This might not be as cool for you, but now... He's collectively, or sorry, classically been, uh, classically been uh, known to have a silver box, an unidentified silver box on stage, uh, in his tone, or rather his chain, and it's his dirt box. And there's been all this speculation of what it is, and it's really, really obvious as to what it is. And finally, there was a little blurb from an ex roadie that put it out there as to what it was, and he put it out on Reddit. Now, and I, there was never a doubt. In, in, in anyone's mind that really knows his tone as to what it is. And it was originally on the very first Rage album, Tim Comerford used a Marshall Governor for like the gainier parts. And you can hear when those parts are like in, um, you know, when he has this, the oh, Jesus, the first album, basically go through it. Anything where you hear the bass audibly get more distorted and a little tiny bit thinner, that's the governor jumping in. Now, what happened was, is in a show in the early days of Rage, the roadie said that in the early days, somebody uh, somebody stepped, a, a crowd surfer stepped on Tim Comerford's governor and broke one of the knobs off. And it just so happened that he broke it off just where it was supposed to be. Um, so basically what he did was he went and built the silver, the silver container, the silver casing as a bit of a fun project um, he built re, he built a, ca a casing around it so that basically it was stage stage diver proof. He he you can plug it in one end, plug it in the other end. It's essentially just an iron box that he keeps a governor inside. Now the other thing is the the road he had to say was that every once in a while Tim Comerford will actually go and rebuild this box to look a bit different just to fuck with people. So inside his box, and if you're curious as to the secret of Rage Against the Machine's bass tone, it's this guy right here. Not this plugin, but the, you know, the specific piece of gear that the uh, Nembrini Audio, the Baus, is based on is the Marshall Govna. Now, we're going to use that maybe a little bit later, but for now, let's get back to the program here. And just we're going to kind of just chill a little bit and play some decent bass. Andy, what's going on? Pedro, how are you? Bo, what's happening? And we have a giveaway today. Aw, oh, shit. I didn't want to... I Gosh, damn it. When I get back from the break, guys, I'm going to bring it. Are you nearby? Can you pass me the envelope from on top of that... Where I put it on top of the fridge? We have a little, a, a little interesting uh, surprise today. Yeah. Please. Thank you so much. Okay. So, as mentioned, uh, there is... Uh, some large stickers. Oh, there are some large stickers. Let's open it up. So somebody in the stream today, in one of the streams today even, uh, is going to get a collection of really, really durable EMG. Oh, gosh! Durable EMG stickers. These things will literally live through just about anything, big and small. And then you get... I'm just, just going to throw this into an envelope. And then you guys will get a... Dave Ellison signature EMG pick. That's Tortex. Uh, you know, it's on the back. It says EMG pickups. I'm not sure if the camera is really picking that up or not, but you guys can see it. And uh, there it is. So, yeah, that'll be coming along uh, into some lucky person in the stream today is going to get this. Uh, staff not excluded on this one. Staff not excluded. We'll see. 
If, if it's a plugin, staff are excluded. But if it's not a plugin, I don't mind if this goes to staff. I don't care. Anybody, someone in this stream is going to win this nice little package today. And it's just stuff I, I I just, I have no need for it. So why don't I pass it along? It makes a fun little thing, right? Let's be honest, if Dave Ellison put that out there and it was like, one lucky winner will win a little pick and some stickers. You know that dude would get like a thousand people that would enter that. No problem. So it'd be kind of, it's fun anyways. Uh, hopefully somebody digs it. We're going to go back to playing a little bit of bass. And we, I guess we are going to get uh, Governor with it. Now on, actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get rid of the boss and we're going to go into... I'll tell you why. We're going to go into Audi Ordi and we're going to get his. And I'll tell you why that is the Overseer instead. Because his has a base modification. Yeah, buddy. Luca has the base mod. We're going to go right here. Boom. Base modified. And we're going to go like this. And don't know exactly how Tim Comfort has it set. And that's the problem. But something tells me it's kind of close to this. Maybe. Oh, maybe not. That is not close. At all. That's also very loud. Very, very loud. Let's bring that back. It's not like that, but it's like, you get it. I'm also not using the same rig. He uses uh, an SVT, uh, I believe an SVT4 Pro, and he uses it through, uh, he also has a kind of an interesting, really interesting cab setup. He's got those really big, heavy duty Ampeg cabs that came out in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, last I saw, he had like a, so the, there was a while he was running orange as well, I actually don't know. I'm not going to speculate as to what he's running right this second because I know he's running orange, but classically he ran an SVT and uh, he's a very unique bass tone. And I can get that tone closer with my music band because, of course, on that particular album he was using a music band. I hate Tortex picks. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm just going to be straight. Like, we all have different picks. A billion picks out there exist for a good goddamn reason, and we cannot. I've seen people argue over picks. No, bro, this pick's better. No, bro, this pick's better. You fucking losers. Shut up. Nobody, it's like, it's so, it's just literally. You, you got to be the biggest loser on earth to argue about picks and which one's better. Because it's all into the the the, the feel of the beholder on that one. Currently, I am using... What is this pick brand again? Is this a magical pick that somebody gave me a long time ago that just rips for bass? And it is from... It's Bill... Is it Bill Kelly? Bill Kelly. No. Something Kelly picks. Fred Kelly. Fred Kelly picks. And it looks something like this. Rat for guitar, too. And I found it the other day after thinking that I had lost it forever. And it's uh, super durable. Love the way it feels. Love, love, love it. So check out Fred Kelly picks. Uh, that needs basically we could do that we could do what, what we're looking for here but we need a bit of a different tone from the amp itself let's just kind of hang out without the effects and just try to kind of chill funky bass i don't really understand what's funky about that i just lost volume <laughs> yeah let's bring that back up Snappy. Let's get some snap. Let's get a get snappier with it. Yeah, I kind of want to play with my fingers a little bit. Not bad, not bad. All 
All right, let's go. Uh... Interesting that this pickup is a little thinner. I don't want to bring that up a little bit. Take the tone back. Tone knob, uh, like, it's like it's barely, it's like it's all the way on or all the way off. In the middle there, it's like, let's see. About halfway. No, that actually is that sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good to you guys. Let's see what we got here. Uh getting ready for work. Yeah, I mean that that sucks, Eddie. I'm sorry to hear that. Later on it'll be the Doom stream. I forgot that we scheduled it for today. That's gonna suck. We might push it back a little bit later though. Gosh dang it. Man, I like a good Coca-Cola. Gosh darn it. Good can Coca-Cola. One dude in the stream was just like, man, you drink a lot of Coke. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's like the one really, really bad thing. And some might not think... Hang on. Get off me. Some might not think Coca-Cola is that bad for you. But when you've worked in a warehouse and you see somebody dump Coca-Cola on acid on battery acid to get the battery acid off the floor when you see that it sort of resonates with you a little bit <laughs> like like yeah i mean i i, I kind of know that it's not that great for me because i mean like i literally watched somebody take bass or battery acid off of a floor with a soft drink so at that point i was like ah, shit maybe i should kick maybe i should like lean back on this a little bit no not at all. Leroy Jenkins, that shit, right all day. Uh, and hello to everybody out there, by the way. And I just clipped it again. I just nonstop clipping, no matter how I set that limiter. I'll figure it out one of these days. I'm going to put a... <laughs> I'd like to find a vocal suite. I'm waiting on... It. Did Banshee come out yet? Did it actually... Was it released? So anyways, uh, this has kind of a fun little section going on back here. There's everything you're going to need. Um, there's the, you, as you see, there's the amp control, the panel here. We're going to mess with that a little bit, but this is kind of truly one of those plugins that is sort of off the beaten path. A little bit of extra GK going on today. Also in the lineup, we've got Cerberus. And this is probably one that I'm going to go ahead and say you've never seen before. I would be, I would be wager, I would wager a guess that most of the people that are watching this stream right now have never seen this plugin, never, never used it. And you'd be missing out because it's not too friggin' bad. And it was probably the turning point in Kuasa's uh, kind of their product line. Everything prior to this was lacking. Everything from this on was just absolutely wonderful. Okay. So this was their turning point. A lot of people think it's with when the Caliburn plug in. There it is. Look at that. Look at that son of a bitch right there. Let me get him. Look at this. Ambush. That was on, my, on its way right up my nose. That would have been dramatic. Get off me. <sighs> Jesus. Things you got to deal with around here. <laughs> I'm going to shave all of you guys. I'm not going to shave any cats. Don't worry. Can you imagine that job? Good gosh. That would be a terrible job. Man, you want to hear what the guys in uh, Simple Plan used to sound like? This is what uh, Simple Plan used to sound like before they were Simple Plan. If you're ever curious. Great fucking band back in those days. Great fucking bass player too. Woo!
gosh, I love this album. Yeah, we do that every once in a while. If you're curious, this is the, the Tasu stream playlist. It's on Spotify. I Just something we listen to in the background. It's not going to get me nuked for copyright every four and a half seconds. Um, most of the artists, in fact, all of the artists on this playlist are really cool with us sharing their, playing their music during streams. And I'm not getting, you know, nuked or not getting copyright strikes and not getting, you know, uh, demonetized or anything like that. So thanks so much to bands for doing that. That's fucking awesome. And cheers to you for helping us make this stream a little bit more entertaining for everyone. Yes. And I kind of have a bit of a story about Simple Plan. But it's definitely a, it definitely sounds like I like to, I, I don't like to tell all the stories from my musical past because I mean, some of the things that I've I had the opportunity to do in my life sound like fish stories. They sound, they do. They sound like fish stories. And uh, I had a story that up until I was actually good friends. I'm going to be honest with you. I was good friends with the guys in Simple Plan. And uh, they needed, when they came to my town, um, when they had just done their first album, they actually had to, they had to sit down with a small group of my friends and actually co uh, co corroborate this story. Um, we'll go over it another time though. But nonetheless, those guys were friends when they were, when they were youngins, they came through here in this band and I promoted several shows for them. And when I moved to Montreal, um, those guys were, I moved to Montreal as like an 18 year old kid, didn't know shit from shit or nobody from nobody. And those guys helped show me around for a bit. So cheers to those guys. Uh, not a real big fan of the music they're making these days, but it's cool to see that people that, you know, I mean, if you ever see those guys though, the simple plan guys, and you go, you look at them and you're like, man, those guys, those guys suck. Those guys are just, oh, you know, it's just radio rock crap. Just understand though, at very least, if it's for what it's worth. Those guys toured in a shitty broken down van eating spaghetti out of a can for a long period of time. They they did pay their dues. They absolutely paid their dues to get where they're at. So it's nice to see people that you know that you know came from eating spaghetti in the back of a of a cargo cold cargo van in minus 20 because I saw it happen. You know it's cool to see guys like that. Um, or, you know, musicians like that, that you know have worked, at least worked their way up. I'm not saying I, I, I agree with when, where they took it, but cheers to them. Cheers for knowing people that, you know, that did something, that did something great on a global scale, not just a Canadian scale either. So that's cool for them. In any event, uh, this is a cool bass amp. It's, you can get it right now for 20 two zero. $20. $20. You can go get this plug in for So now going over the... The stuff that's involved here, you have the noise gate, you have the filters that are your, basically your high and your low pass filters that are roughly kind of set for you already here around 50 hertz. Uh, that's a decent area This maybe set your, you know, kind of set, tighten things up. You could go lower than that. You could go higher than that. You can just turn it right off. We're going to turn them off for the sake of just giving you guys the, the full spectrum of what you're going to hear it. There's also a trim, just the input gain and the power soak which is pretty rad. And this is something rare that they don't have on a lot of their plugins. This is had, this one has a dual IR section. This one is loaded. One side is loaded with, well, we have a bunch of different options. You have four by, you have four by tens, eight by tens, one by fifteens, two by tens, one by fifteens from Gelly and Kruger. Uh, you have Ampeg, you've got Ampeg. And what else have you got down here? Oh my gosh. What does English mean? Marshall 412 Marshall cabinets in here. That's interesting. I can see why they did that. Then I'll explain. They have a buy amp feature in this, and that gives you basically uh, one amp is controlling. Ideally, this is kind of. I mean, I'm not going to explain this exactly because I just I I don't know the amp that well. But in most buy amp features, you have something that will drive. You know, you'll have something that gives the ability to drive a couple of different cabinets and one's going to have be power powering like your top end and one's going to be powering like, like your, your bottom end. So you can see like the master volumes here. You can kind of do things here that kind of affect the cabinets in a sense. Um, all, all sorts of fun things you can do. And this one's really handy because you actually have recording chain off, which is nice. You don't have to go to the bottom of the list anymore. You just go boops and Boops, and then I can go use my own, uh, you know, my own, sorry, my own assortment 
It is a bummer, though, that they've never really included the ability to, lo to load your own. And they also give you the ability here, horn on or off, which is cool. That's really great. So I'm going to turn the horns on here. Uh, you can't. You, uh, that's okay. You can chug on base. I just, I disagree. I was chugging on this thing. Just, I was testing the distorted possibly capabilities of these pickups. And believe me, they can do plenty. If you've, if you've never played along to Roots on base, I, I you, you need to do it. You got to do it. You have to play along to, to Roots on base. Sepultura, Roots on base. And by the way, that whole thing going on with um, Eloy Casagrande and how he kind of left them right before that A Big Arena show, that's really weird. And I think that's really strange of Slipknot, knowing full well that he has this huge commitment coming up to get him to bail on that huge commitment just for what, rehearsals? I don't know, man. Kind of greasy. Kind of greasy. And then, like, I went and watched video of that and the drummer that played Roots. I mean, God give the guy, got to give the guy credit for, like, stepping in super short notice. You gotta give him credit for that, right? Because the guy stepped into an arena show, farewell arena show, uh, with Sepultura, and but he played Roots wrong, and that oh, he played Roots wrong, and it wasn't like it was sort of like and there was no like that 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 the offbeat wasn't there, and I was just like, guy, you gotta do. You got it. Oh, <laughs> but nonetheless, if you've never played Sepultura Roots on bass, you got to do it. Your wrist is going to hate you after, if especially if the action on the bass sucks. You might, you might be thinking, how hard could it possibly be? Well, give it a shot. You're playing on that big 130 or 140 or whatever you've got on your lowest uh, string. <clears throat> what is that? And why is it on my list? That sounded terrible. I don't want that. All right, cool guys. We're having a good time here today. I'm just playing some bass, having a good hangout, testing out some new pickups from uh, EMG. And I know it's not really a new pickup, um, but it is a pretty, it's, an, it's a new pickup to me. And I was able to get this bass kind of brought back from the dead. Pardon me, I just for some reason today, Having these weird little burps. I know I'm drinking a carbonated beverage, but even more so. Yeah, dude, that is a bit shit for Sepultura, no? Yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of shit for them. I really feel for them, and I really feel that they kept their composure because you knew, you know, they had to know they had to have probably signed NDAs. That were like, hey guys, I'm leaving the band, but if I can't tell you for who for, unless you guys sign an NDA. <clears throat> and they probably wanted to know, so they probably signed it, but they, they probably knew anyway. I gotta figure, man, like, he probably, he's probably known for a bit, no? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? And you can also invert the phase on these. Uh, and that neat nifty info is there as well. Okay, yeah, we get to find out what is what does English mean? 412 Marshall is what I think it probably means. And I guess I think it makes sense if you wanted to run like a 412 guitar cabinet on the top and then run a bass cabinet on the bottom. Kind of there's more than a few bass players out there that have done that over the years because they wanted that nasty distorted sound, but they also wanted that something a little more with more oomph to kind of reinforce that bottom end, which is also really nice. Yeah, I'm not saying he should have stayed for the last, the whole last tour. No way. I understand if if Slipknot, if he's getting a phenomenal gig, 
I mean, just his YouTube, guys, just his YouTube views ever since this whole thing has come around. Just his YouTube views on like his Slipknot covers and some of his more modern rel covers that are re relatable to Slipknot fans. All of those videos have jumped up about 10 million views or 7 million, 5, 6 million views over the last like month. That dude is making some bank. Making some bank on YouTube, guys. Do you realize? Like, go look up how much 1 million views gets you. I think I'm, I'm, this is just spitballing, but I think I, I, they equated something like every time you get a million views, it's anywhere from 30 to $50,000. And then after that, you also have a lot of sponsors that every time, if you have a certain sponsors, will tell you that if you, if you have sponsors, every time you get a million views, that sponsor will kick you something extra for incentives. So man like even just those kickups from the mere mention of possibilities which is now obvious he is in the band but i mean that's pretty crazy right they didn't announce though they showed a picture of a drumstick yeah but i mean pedro it is it's for rehearsals there's nothing else going on the band hasn't booked any shows what else could possibly be going on obviously there were probably recording a new album or something but you couldn't wait like a, a week like a week you couldn't give that guy a week more and just be like guys i got this thing i gotta do and then after that we are good to go but no nothing all right let's keep going here guys i'm getting off the point but we like to talk during streams anyways that's no different than any other stream yeah this <laughs> this fucking plugin sounds great and this compressor sounds rad here's a without Okay, and now here's with. Sounds pretty good. I'm gonna turn on my room verb and see where we're at. I just kind of wanted to use my room verb in the chain. I wanna see if I... Yeah, that sounds actually, it sounds better. Any Anytime we do anything here, it sounds better with a room verb. What a riff this is, guys. We are going to be doing a Doom stream later. Oh, I'm so excited. We're finally doing one. We're doing a Doom stream, a Tone Talk, the first of many Doom streams we are going to be doing. I'm looking to do a Doom segment similar to High Gain Haven, where every week or bi-weekly, you'll be able to show up and see three different little Doom rigs that we've planned out for you. This is specific, though. This one is just, uh, sorry, has a very specific audience. I cannot say, because I'm bound by an NDA, I cannot say which band, but there is a certain band out there that needs some convincing, and they might get into the sweet game someday. But they don't think there's certain Doom influencer that also doesn't believe that plugins can do Doom effectively. We need to prove that wrong. We need to show them that that's not the truth. That is not the way it's going to go down for bass or guitar. So. Uh, we're going to be doing a Doom stream for uh, good for guitar. We're going to have we've got some really nice stuff queued up. We're going to make some filthy, filthy, horrible sounds. Probably a nice herbal, uh, herbally enhanced environment going on here. Please have a beer. Please smoke a joint. Please have a glass of wine. Whatever it is, even if you do none of those things and you're a straight edge, grab a candy bar. Grab a grab a thing of popcorn. We're going to make some horrible sounds with plugins. But right now, we're making some smooth, really nice, smooth kind of sounds going on. Now, I'm just kind of trying to figure out how to balance these two. Now, is it... Hang on a sec. We got to figure this out. Because I see the crossover right here. Where is it? I'm kind of trying to figure out exactly how I go between these two impulse responses. I see RC off, RC info, horn, invert. I don't see... Uh, I don't see anything else. So I'm assuming that it's the crossover or just the, the amps here. So I'm going to bring that up and bring this back and see what happens.
Okay, now what if I reverse that and just jack this up, bring that way back. Or your ears. Okay, maybe the word... Hold on, I, I missed something. Yeah, okay, but here's the thing. I mean, Joey Jordison knew he was going to get fired. <clears throat> he was reportedly do doing so many things to the point where he was just basically begging to get fired. And then when he did get fired, it was like, oh, no, I got fired. Oh, no. Like, they knew he, he knew that they didn't want him starting new bands and everything else. And he just kept on fucking doing her doing whatever he wanted to do, apparently missing, missing rehearsals and so on and so forth, uh, not to mention the drugs and everything else. And he went really, really hard in every direction. Apparently, you know, when you get when you're a type impulsive and you're a type of person that gets an addictive personality, maybe it's easy to get enveloped in things that aren't like your and, and make other things your main focus. When you're like your main focus should, should be elsewhere, your brain is just basically telling you, nah, that shit doesn't fucking matter. It'll be there at some point and you go and kind of do your own thing for a while. And people that are counting on you elsewhere they get a little sick and tired. I get that one. Jay Weinberg, I'm also not fucking crying for Jay Weinberg. The dude's a, a hired gun. He is, a, he is a session musician. He was not hired to be a, a lifelong member of that band. They made him look like him. He was a full member of the band. But at the end of the day, he is a session musician. And like any session musician, bass player, guitar player, whatever you are, if you are a hired session musician, you can get fired as fast as you got hired. That's just it. And I, I saw there's a re, there's an amazing documentary on, I think it's on, oh, geez, I don't know what it's on now. It was on Netflix. It's bounced around a little bit. It's called Hired Guns. I think it was called Hired Guns. And it's all about session musicians and the, li the lives they lead. And how, like, literally, guys will be sitting there and be like, hey, my band, the band I'm in announced a tour. I don't know anything about this tour. And then literally just nobody told them they got a new drummer. Nobody just, nobody told them. The guy that they got a new drummer and they went, they're going on a world tour. Nobody told them. And just nobody said a damn word. They just hired a new guy. Or, you know, like there's a lot of different stories out there of guys just getting, like in Nashville, especially, there's a bunch of books out there, especially from the uh, country and country days and everything else. Nashville is where a lot of the session stuff happens and those guys will talk about like literally getting cut in the middle of a take because somebody that they liked better walked by the studio and they're like, hey, you'd be perfect for this. Yeah, go fire that guy that's in, right, in there right now. Just go tell him, you know, pay him for the day and tell him thank you very much. That's it. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't feel bad for Jay Weinberg at all. I'm sorry. Oh, he can go cry on his bunch of money and his overinflated session fee because of his, of his last name. That's that's just the end of it. So if you're Slipknot, you can go out and get a way better drummer for a cheaper session fee because Aloy Casagrande is going to be way cheaper than Jay Weinberg simply because of Jay Weinberg's lineage and his name, his experience with a number of different bands. Um, so he's going to be more expensive for a lesser drummer. Say what you like. He is a lesser metal drummer. Now, that being said, Jay Weinberg also playing with uh, the Suicidal Tendencies. You go on YouTube and you look up him playing with, with Suicidal Tendencies. You can't hear anything but Rob Trujillo and Jay Weinberg. And you can really just see those two going back and forth. And you realize right then and there, pop, that was meant to be. Those two are meant to be together in a band. And that band was meant for Jay Weinberg. So it all worked out in the end. So stop having... Everybody out there needs to just, you know, he don't need to cry for Jay Weinberg. I know you're not, but like, man, Slipknot fans are really crying for Jay Weinberg. Ah, it's such a sick bass plugin, guys. I'm loving all the different things that you can do with this. And I'm going to bring these back to about half mast and we're going to mess around with this a little bit more
I see. They give you the the option of a crossover or a buy-in. Okay, cool. Man, this compressor is awesome, guys. And then we're going to get the bot in there. This is free. You guys can go get this. If you've never heard of a Sans, a Sans Amp Bass Driver DI before, I feel bad for you. I do. I feel kind of bad for you, and you need to go and check one out ASAP. Hell yeah. That sounds beautiful. Too much high, uh, top end there. I don't need all that. Cool. That sounds great. Everything's sounding good so far. Gives it more beef. Damn. So far, these pickups are definitely hitting the spot exactly what I needed for this bass, which was something that could really sound big and ballsy this bass is just sort of been kicking around kicking around kicking around kicking around and then eventually someone decided to do something with it and i'm doing something with it and um parts all came together everything sounds great the black beast finally is is whole and uh, if you guys give it a nice whole long look this is just an ibanez sound gear an old one too it, it sounds pretty good though Yeah, heck yeah. So I basically need to I need to look up how um it's the most bizarre thing. EMG sent this set of pickups and the set comes with two tone and two volume. But the diagram for the set only shows as much as two tone or sorry, two volume and one tone. And when I tried to just kind of use my brain to to kind of look and be like, "Okay, this is how I hook up another tone." It didn't really work out that way. So I'm kind of rocking one tone right now, which is fine. But I was kind of enticed by the idea of having a tone control per pickup in a bass because that can enable you to do something kind of interesting. You could kind of do a parallel distortion type thing right on board almost by just kind of turning the, uh, you know, using something with some distortion and then you know turning the tone down on like say your whichever pickup you choose and the tone you know remaining on the other and then you'd kind of have this big fuzzy driven low end that wouldn't sound like fuzz because the tone will be all the way off right it's going to be that would be kind of interesting so we'll see if i can get that going in the, in the long run What a good song this is. Can it all, oh, it's almost almost time, guys. Almost time to go for that uh that middle middle of the stream break. What a great bass this has turned out to be. I almost I almost gave up on this bass. I almost gave up on it. I had a set of fishmans that holy cow, the the second toughest, no, maybe the third. Top, top five hardest things I've ever had to wire. Um, if you have a choice between Quick Connect, if you're like, if you, for bass pickups anyways, um, man, like, geez, gosh, it was, it was a tough install. If you're buying a set of Fishman pickups to install yourself, just know that you're going to have, a, it's going to be, it's tough. It's not going to, it's not an easy install at all, guys. Uh, just understand that and you'll be better off 100%. You'll be way better off if you understand that it's going to be tough install. However, when it comes to EMG, it could not be easier. It's literally all quick connect. It's there's almost no soldering. Although in this case there was because it's a barrel jack and I didn't, you can't really, re, you're not really going to replace a barrel jack with like a different, a different jack. You want to leave the barrel, barrel jack in there. 
Um, so I had to do a tiny bit of soldering, but apart from that, it was great. Have you been looking in your community for like rental fees? Even people with cabinets for sale, Eddie, you should just be like, message them and be like, hey, can I rent your cabinet for like, I don't know, can I rent your cabinet for a night at some point? Yeah, anyways, guys, it's been fun today. I love playing bass. I'm just not, I don't know. I just, it, it's not as entertaining for you guys. It just isn't. Yeah, hell yeah. So this is a lot of fun. We're going to uh, basically, if you want to go get this right this second, do not delay. Head over to Plugin Alliance. I'm pretty sure that their uh, their sale is still open. Wait, you can just touch that. I don't even need to do that. I just click here now and it does it. Oh, sick. I don't even have to hit effects rack anymore. Anyways, if you want to get this plugin, you can go get it right now for $20. 20 $20 for this plugin right now. It looks great. It sounds awesome. And uh, if you guys want, this is available. As I said, 20 bucks. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can. God damn it. I actually could used to be able to play John the Fisherman quite well. Almost all the way through. The only play I could part I couldn't play was the ba I couldn't do that. That's the only part of the song that I really, really struggled with, but I can actually give me a little bit of, give me a next bass stream. Hold on. Okay, hold on. No, that's not it. And this riff that you're listening to right here, they break it down. And they're literally, it's not a heavy band, but it's a heavy band. Somehow, they're heavy, and all they're using is Telecasters. Here it comes. Here it comes. What a rad riff. And with that, I'm playing you guys into the break. It is a, such a superb fucking riff, though. It like, does it get better than that riff? Nightmare King by Battlesnake, everybody. We love that song in here. Or at least I do. Fun, pa fun fact. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Uh... I basically, when I started playing with my fingers, I have a, a list of songs. I had a, a list of like songs that I know I know for a fact are played with fingers that I was going to challenge myself to, and I'm I'm happy to say that I learned almost all of them, and uh, three of them were, the, were by Chili Peppers, and uh, I'm still working on higher ground though because I'm just starting to learn how to slap. And it is not going well. 
<laughs> it's not going well. You know, as a guitar player, you like pretend you can air slap with your friends and be like, I know exactly how that works. I could totally do that. Ah, slapping doesn't seem like it'd be that hard. I could totally do that. And then you get a bass in your hand, and you're like, ah, I can't do that. <laughs> Fucking Victor, how are you, buddy? You know what? Victor's gonna win it today. Victor's gonna win it. Assuming he wants me to ship it to him. That's that that's good. It's gonna be Victor or it's gonna be Eddie. One of the two. Victor doesn't want it. Victor, we're giving away a small prize pack today. Uh this will be uh some giant EMG stickers, some small EMG stickers, and a signature Dave Ellison Tortex pick. Uh complete with the little hazmat sign on it. Uh, this is going to go to somebody in an envelope. It's not going to cost me nothing. It's going to cost me maybe to the other side of the universe. It might cost me $10 to send this to someone. Okay, so I'm going to do it snail mail, letter mail. I'm going to pack it up like this. All right, and we're going to put it in an envelope, and I'm going to send it out to you. Okay, that's the way you're going to get it. So, uh, Victor, communicate with me. I'll make sure you get this little prize pack from EMG uh, and myself. So... Victor's going to win that today, guys. Man, I'm so glad that Eddie has ideas of what he really wants to do with, like, impulse responses. We're going to be putting out some cool packs. Um, I've been lucky enough to have a friend of mine who, who put a lot of work into a would-be impulse response business and then basically got married, had kids, COVID happened, and uh, he abandoned like 15 libraries, 15 plus, almost, I think it's nearly 20 libraries of 20 cabinets where the stuff that he shot. And he said, I could have them. And uh, the files as them, as they're as on their own kind of need a little attending to. So uh, in blends, it's been interesting to work with them. And some of them are sounding pretty good. So we'll be coming up with my own sets of blends based on those files sometime in the next, oh, I don't know, sometime in the next couple of months. Yeah, it is neat, buddy, and no problem. Just message me on uh, the, the, the Book of Face, and I'll make sure that you get it sent out. I don't care where in the world you are. This is easy enough to send out. And Pedro, you haven't given me uh, your address either, I, as I need to get those pickups out to you, brother. I'm also going to be getting rid of, uh, going to be relinquishing myself, relinquishing uh, a, a whole bunch of pickups uh, coming up. So we're going to give you, like, we're going to put them all on reverb. And uh, I'll shoot our reverb thing out there. And if anybody from the page wants to buy something from our reverb page, they'll get a discount code to do so. All right, guys, it's up to the middle of the stream. So far, the Dave Ellison set is absolutely cooking. But how will it do with some distortion after this? Huh? Can we get some distortion going through these fucking pickups? All right, let's do that. Uh, once again, thanks so much to Tommy over at EMG uh, for believing in Honest Amp Sim reviews and also believing in the Amp Sim universe. I didn't even ask him. I wanted to pay. I wanted to pay him for these pickups. And uh, and he was just, he wasn't having any of it on this one. He really supports what we do here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to uh, Tommy for this set. And they are going to work out great. The other thing he sent me, sadly, as I told you guys yesterday, um, sadly, very sadly, he also sent me an EMG 81 and everything I'd need to do the PA2 and the Slayer mod and a bunch of other stuff. And then the guitar that I was working with, the neck is just kind of fucked. So I'm now in search of a neck, a 56 millimeter neck in the heel. I'm going to need to find a neck. That's going to have to happen. We're going to have to do that in the next little while. All right gonna be a fun guitar when she's done though this thing is gonna be literally looks like it rolled out of a ditch stabbed somebody stole a car and then fell asleep in another ditch uh ready to do it all again the next day so it's uh hopefully you guys dig it i'll uh bring it up to show you guys for the doom stream it's not gonna get played but i'll definitely show you what we've done and uh see what you guys think of it all right guys so i'll be back in three minutes did you say tommy like did you say like Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, Tommy's the man. He really is, though. That guy must have let me test a billion sets of pickups, guys. And 
so many noise issues though here that I was having at the time. So it was really hard for me to test pickups in this environment until I got the denoiser. Guys, I'll be back three minutes. Give me, uh, give me a shot here and I'll be there uh, back in just a moment. This fucking song rules so hard. Here it comes. Wait for it. I feel like I would be in there would be a mosh pit right now. Imagine playing the, the, the mandolin for that part. Happy little, happy little, happy little boozer. 
Man, I hope you guys are doing great because I'm having a fucking great day. Absolutely fantastic day. <coughs> I bought this 50-50. Eddie will know what that means. I bought this 50-50. Andy did a Satipa and <coughs> gosh, it is exactly the power that I need in my day. Exactly the herbal power for the day. 100%. Mosh the plank. <laughs> I love I, that's one guy's one thing I love it's very different from guitar I am not gonna lie to you guys I hate playing covers on guitar I don't really enjoy covering songs on guitar that much unless it's a song from my youth that I am now as an adult talented enough to play I love doing that I fucking love going after songs that in my youth gave me nothing but fucking headaches all the time and as an adult just whipping those songs out, like learning them and being like, really? Did I just fucking learn that song? Are you kidding me? And like, just you sit there like, I'm not saying I'm an amazing guitar player, but I'm a shitload of a lot better than I was when I was 15. I'll give you that. Okay. So when I sit there as a, as, as a 15 year old, you know, cracking those beautiful tab books open, that is the one thing that kids, guitar players these days, we're all missing out. I know that tab books are very much still popular and they're getting more popular again. And that is just amazing. Sheet happens. Thank you so much. They're not a sponsor, but man, that they're cool. Thanks for doing what you guys do. But back in the day, you'd get like, I remember the most beautiful tab book I ever got. And it was also the worst moment in my life. And that, that book was the Rust in Peace book. And if you guys remember them, they're yay big. They're big, big books. And they are beautiful. The cover of the the cover of the book is the cover of the album. It looks gorgeous. And I remember cracking that book open and just feeling like, <laughs> oh shit, no, no. And then of course, you know, my dad's coming in, pop, my stepdad's popping in the room every once in a while. Hey, you working on that book we got you for Christmas? Yeah, fucking totally, Dad. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're like, I just fucking, I just can't even fucking. Then you try to learn something as an adult that you nail. And I nail it and be like, holy shit, this is great. And bass is no different. Bass is no different. The thing is, it's way better with bass for me. I absolutely will play along to anything on bass. On guitar, it has to be just the right song. But on bass, you put anything in front of me, I will try to learn it by ear. I'll play along to it and I'll have a great time doing it. I wish I could do that live in live stream and just play along to shit instead of, you know, making and just talk, talk, talk. But, you know, this is kind of fun sometimes, too. So anyhow, moving forward, we've been playing with this for a long time now. So we're going to get rid of this. The Galleon Kruger, Galleon Kruger, Galleon Kruger. I've heard it said both ways. Um, yeah, 800 RB right now. $20 from Plugin Alliance. They have everything on sale right now. And this is a cover of Jesus Build My Hot Rod. I found a hack to the system. You cannot get... You can't get any, there's no kind of copyright anything for covers. So you can look up as many covers as we want, put them on here, and then nothing goes, no, there's not even a, hey, we noticed you, but it's okay. There's nothing. It's all just like, gone. Doesn't matter. That's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, so I, at some point, maybe we'll, we'll do some playing the covers. Uh, anyways, this is 20 bucks. The entire, the entire line of plugins over at, uh, at, Plugin Alliance right now. There's a lot of plugins for 20 bucks, guys. Go and check it out right now. I'm not being paid. I'm not a shill. Um, I don't even think I know anybody at that company anymore ever since it sold. Um, just managed to still kind of stay on the beta, the beta list, even though like the company sold and some other things happened. The beta list is untouched. Fantastic goal. So uh, yeah, anyways, this is pretty damn cool. And if you're looking for a super versatile amp sim that can uh, bass amp sim rather that can do distorted tones it's got a little nice blend of all different types of cabinet sizes you can blend the cabinets you can blend all kinds of different things and it's got a bunch of different unique little like i said there's low cut mid contour high boost all different things that you can do with this thing and it's a tone machine so get it while it's hot and cheap and it's gonna have to say goodbye for now
Now, there's one thing I do want, and I said I was going to avoid it today, but it's coming back. It's coming. The black ice is coming because I want to try some distorted tones, and I just I know this is going to give me exactly what I want for distorted tones. So let's try this out. If you've never tried the black ice beta gamma, boy, it's a fun plugin, super fun plugin, and we're going to make sure it's armed and ready to do some damage here. I'm going to do that. Do a little, little bit of this, a little bit of that, and let's see where we're at. That's uh, pretty beefy. And we don't need the bod, though. Pretty sweet. We can definitely gas that up a little bit more. So let's go to the cabinet section and have a look around. As you guys notice, there is a 4x10, there is a 1x15, a hard key 4x10, uh, this is another Ampeg, I think that's just it, yeah. So there's three Ampegs and a hard key from what, uh, anything else? No, that's it. And then, of course, you've got your blend here. This essentially will blend the, uh, the cabinet and the DI. Um, the ambient mic I do not require at any level. Not at any at all right now, because I've got my own ambient thing going on here, and I just would rather use that because I'm used to it and I don't have to get to use get to know something else. All right. Anyways, so if you've ever used this unit before, man, uh, it's obviously based off a dark, a dark glass unit, a lot of uh, dark glass, uh, unlicensed dark glass stuff out there these days. And it really is a shame that when the ownership of Neural DSP and Dark Glass was intertwined, it's really a goddamn shame they didn't do another Dark Glass plugin out there. It would have been so rad to do another, to have like a Dark Glass suite or a couple more of those. The one that they did do is still pretty damn relevant and it's pretty awesome. So check that out if you've never checked out. Actually, their first plugin, the very first plugin that Neural DSP ever released was actually the Dark Glass Ultra. Uh, so yeah, check that out when you have a chance. That sounds pretty damn good. I don't know about you guys, it's strong. Yeah, ballsy, so big and beefy sounding is I'm really, really liking this. Uh, this set of pickups is exactly what this bass needed. And as we've all, as we've done several times here, we've tested certain sets in certain guitars and eventually did, they just lived there. And there's a lot of guitars here Then pretty much almost every guitar here has a set that just, that I, you know, tried out or purchased or decided to experiment with and it just lives in that guitar forever because it was there's just you get a good feeling there are guitars that sound good with just about any any set of pickups that you put in them but then there's you'll notice and you'll notice it if you test enough pickups in the same guitar eventually there's that set you're gonna put in there where you go oh <laughs> Oh, really? Even if you had that set in another guitar and you're like, okay, that's cool. And then you put them in this guitar and all of a sudden these pickups just floor you. That is where you parked your car. That is where those pickups now live. And taking them out of that guitar would be instrumental abuse. All right. You're taking a guitar away from its children. <laughs> you need to leave those, those, <laughs> you need to leave those pickups in that guitar. In this case, I think these are living in this space for the rest of this space's life. Pardon me, guys. Hopefully, you guys are having a fun day. Later on today, uh, we are going to be giving away a wonderful IR pack. The doomiest IR pack in the entire Valhalla 
collection. Which pack that is? Not really sure yet, actually. I'm going to have to go through exactly what that... I think it's going to be the BOA, because the BOA is unbelievable for Doomy stuff. But it may not be. Oh, gosh. Coca-Cola. This is a great song. Great guitar tone. I wonder what does uh, Primal Fear use? I think it's angle stuff, right? But the bass tone in this, man, homie just plays the straight up Cliff Williams role and he's just straight. <laughs> you know, Cliff Williams, you don't know that guy's name. Really? You don't know his name, do you? Well, he may... He made about as much money as Angus Young did in, in ACDC, and he had to play, oh, I don't know, about uh, 5% of the notes. He's the bass player from ACDC, and that homie just rides that note. Him and, like, Tom Araya is barely a bass player. And they were saying, I don't know if it was it's a joke or not, but they said that at times in the 90s, in the late, late 80s, early 90s, that Tom Araya was so bad at bass they just used to turn him off <laughs> and just leave the guitars because nobody was no everybody you know, as long as he's as long as tom is banging his head up there we don't fucking care um but his bass lines were generally designed to be very very simple so that he could sing and bang his head cliff williams wasn't banging his head wasn't moving around and wasn't singing really he just needed to stand back there just Maybe occasionally be dirty deeds and the dun dead cheap. You know, just, just rolling that one note. Fuck you. I'm going to make as much money as this guy is. And he played four billion notes in this. <laughs> you know what I mean? <sighs> Anyways, we're having fun talking about bass players today. Um, and I actually think it's brilliant when a bass player just keeps it as simple as possible. Your job as a bass player is to accent both the drummer and the, you're that middle man between the drums and the guitar. Your job is to basically play with both of those people or uh, both of those people are playing at the same time and accent both of them at the same time. So your job, even if you're playing simple, is still pretty hard. Stay in time, stay in time, stay in time, stay in time. I don't give a fuck how flashy you are as a bass player. If you can't stay, if you cannot, if you don't have a good meter, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> if I if I see this dude's tapping way up here and then he literally can't just do the Cliff Williams special and just <laughs> Cliff Williams never went out of time in a, uh, for a milli, a single millisecond of his life. And he uh, that but I'm not saying everybody's got to be play that simple, but just make sure you're accenting don't try to be your own instrument. You have a job. The bass player has a job in the band. Don't try to be your own instrument. There's ways to be technical and get seen and be a big part of the band in the mix without having to go off and do your entirely your own thing that's apart from the job that you have initially, which is to accent the guitar while holding down the relationship of the low end. That's your job. And then, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I sound like Glenn Fricker here, like, I just, maybe I do. Maybe I sound like Glenn Fricker all of a sudden. But uh, in this particular case, this is, this is right. I'm, I'm just trying to be helpful. Nobody cares about what a bass player can do above the 12th fret if everything he can do between the zero and five isn't completely sound. You know what I mean? Am I, am I making any sense to you guys? I, my bass skills are very, very modest, very modest and very intermediate. But I feel like I can keep pretty good time. And one reason, one way I do that is by playing along to things on Spotify like this right here. The drum loops for jamming. I just want to show you guys this real quick. And so this would be... You just cranked up something like that and just...
And that is the kind of thing that's so simple and it seems boring as fuck. And it seems like, man, why don't I just go back to playing in the eighth grade band when we were doing eight, you know, you were playing like nine bar, or nine, not mine, but nine bars. You're playing 16 bars of G of the G chord on the guitar or the instrument you're at. And like, if you're a drummer, you're just hitting that. And you might seem like that's really super easy and that kind of easy to go after. But at the same time, man, it's like, it's important to have a good meter. So if you're the ba a bass player out there and you need a good meter, okay? If you're a bass player out there, have a good meter. It doesn't matter how much flash you have. And if you can't do the simple stuff as a drummer, it doesn't matter how much flash you have if you can't hold a simple 4-4 four, four meter. Okay? Let me be like, I'm just trying to help out. I'm just trying to help out. I'm not, am I the best musician and the most on-time musician of life? No, absolutely not. I struggled as a drummer uh, for a very long time with my meter because I'd always want to speed up. Uh, I, I would always come out of fills faster. And that is one of the hardest things to do as a drummer with no click track nothing really to go after is to get really excited for that big ass fill same with with bass players to do like bass players that'll put in that nice tasteful little bass fill once in a while just a nice little in the bass line somewhere just to stand out enough and be like damn that was a tasteful lick and then hold down the, and then go back to doing your job right But my my problem was going into the fill, getting excited for the fill that I had worked on, going, you know, getting charged up by that change in the song, being, you know, full of energy. And then as a drummer, I'd be going into the fill and then come out of it like maybe, you know, anywhere from three to five BPM quicker than when I went into the fill. And I've seen lots of that's a really bad habit a lot of drummers have. And it's really something that's hard to get over. Um, when you're trying to really find your meter. So doing that is, again, just simple stuff. Playing along to a click track, playing along to uh, as many different records as you can and doing those fills and then learning that, you know, then you'll be listening to it. You're doing the fill, you do the fill, you come out of it and all of a sudden you're ahead of their drummer. You're like, shit, I got to slow it down. Slow it down more and more and more. So yeah, nine bars. That's why I immediately stopped myself like, damn, Jesus. Progressive. And I don't mind though, Eddie, when, uh, when, fuck this part is just rules so hard. Sorry. Uh, I, I don't mind that though, Eddie, when, where we can talk about this too, because like, this is part of every one of our streams. We liked a lot of discussion, gives it that podcasty, that live type feel. And we love that here. Okay. Uh, now I just want to point out that I don't mind though, when a bass follows exactly what the guitar is doing. I don't mind. That's fine. But that's totally fine by me. Within reason, though, okay? When the guitar player is playing, like, really fast trim picking, bass players, if you're a metal bass player out there, you got to, like, anything really, really fast, you're going to have to take out one strum in between. You're going to have to, you're going to have to bring it back. So what would be, like, is actually going to turn in, for me, a lot of that when the guitar player's you know, doing the trim picking for me as a bass player, that turns into just being. And then you just throw a little do 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 a little fill at the end there, keeping it simple. Um, and that way, but if you're doing, if you're a bass player and you're trying to do those fast, super fast licks with the guitar, Shit, it can get messy really fast. It could. It could get messy really fast. I realize that a lot of bass players these days plays like we're listening to Arcspire for fuck's sake. I understand that what bass players can do, but you have to be exceptionally talented if you're wanting to try to follow exactly what the guitar player is doing on the bass. And when it comes to like, you know, extreme metal and fast metal type stuff, even just thrash. All right, cool, guys. So yeah, we've been having a good time today. We've been uh, this so long. I'm gonna say it so far, so good. My my thoughts on these pickups are thumbs up. Thanks so much. I, well, well chosen. Well chosen. I didn't know what 
he just sort of said, hey, man, there's, I, I was like, did you have a, a price on those pickups? He's just like, no, there's something in the mail for you, buddy. And I'm like, what? Oh, shit. Like, hell yeah. Okay. I had no idea was what I was going to get. And I was very, very happy uh, to see that it was the Ellefson set. And uh, Dave Ellefson, um, one thing about the dude, <laughs> he's made some questionable decisions in his career. Um, maybe a cup. I mean, he's gone head to head with Dave Mustaine a couple of times. And gotten his uh, his himself booted booted out of the band for having an opinion, okay. And then uh, you know more sem more semi recently made uh, a, a a kind of a very poor decision, and then got himself kicked out of the band again. Um, but he still hasn't lost any respect from the music community. Um, I mean, it seems like one thing about Dave uh, Ellison is that, um, and by the way, I think. Going back to it, I'm not saying that if somebody does something horrible, then like as long as he's got cool pickups and he's in a good band, no problem. But I mean, uh, I think going back to it, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know this for sure. So you can quote me or not quote me. I don't really don't quote. I don't give a fuck. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was that other situation. The situation he got himself into turned out to be a lot different than it was perceived initially. But it was still involved a lot of bad judgment. It was a bad judgment call that probably shouldn't have happened, but nonetheless seemed a lot more sinister when it came out than when it the actual details came out. That is what I read. Am I wrong? You can tell me so in the comments. Like and subscribe or dislike and subscribe if you'd like. Um, that being said, he's still around in music. He's still doing metal stuff and his bass tone from the time that he entered the music scene or so the current times his bass tone has always been very 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 good his bass lines have always been very very good like if you listen to the Dave, i don't know if it's dave ellison or dave mustaine writing the bass lines but i mean in general this dude like if you go to like go even go just listen to go and listen to uh symphony of destruction he's just a simple example and go listen to the bass in that it is really not what you'd think it was it could be it could be so much of a different baseline but it turns out the baseline ends that ended up for that being really really strong and accenting the rest of the song while also playing with the drums wonderful isn't it hi everybody i'll look into the previous bar the bass plugin that i haven't tried before higher gun is a good documentary it absolutely is <clears throat> there's a few though there's a few documentaries out there about the li the lives of hired musicians. And, and I think that, uh, going back to it real quick, I think that what Slipknot fans don't understand about hired musicians is everything. <laughs> it seems like they just, they don't understand that V-Man and Jay Weinberg are session guys that came in as session guys. And I'm pretty sure V-Man is still in the band, if I'm not mistaken. He's still in the band. He's fine have to change that because I wasn't really feeling that specific track in that exact moment. In any event, moving along, um, yeah, there's a few out there. There's a few documentaries out there that explain the lives of hired musicians. It can be really, really profitable. If you're really good, you do your job, you show up, you don't make waves, you just, you do as you're told. It, some people can't really handle that lifestyle. Some people just really like being their own person. Like Dave Mustaine could not be a hired musician. You know what I mean? There are songwriters and then there are hired musicians and there are some guys um, whose names you'll never know. Brent Mason. If you've never heard Brent Mason's name, you wouldn't surprise me unless you follow country music. But that guy's the most recorded guitar player in, the in in I believe, in music history. If, I, if he's not, he if he's not, he was at one point. The most recorded guitar player in in music history, meaning that he basically just makes his living walking from studio to studio in Nashville, Tennessee, recording on all of the biggest name records possible. And then what they do is after that, they go and hire a cheaper musician to play the stuff on tour is often what bands will do is they'll hire cheaper music, they'll hire the best of the best to play it in the studio. And then um, after that, they will get somebody you know, cheaper, but still very talented to play on the road. And Brent Mason was the, often the guy that would play in the studio and like over and over and over. And it's a tough life for some of them because you're walking in with different musicians and different tracks and different people every day. Although in 
<sighs> in Nashville, Tennessee, playing in that bunch. Of, let's be honest, it's probably just like going from it's like we're going from one white t-shirt to the next to the next to the next they're all the same white t-shirt if you're you know so for him he just walks in records absolute banging banging uh, you know chicken picking solos and little lead licks for behind what's going on and walks out with you know x amount of dollars and then possibly royalties and some other things going on right so um to be a session musician you got to be really good you've got to be you've got to learn stuff on the fly really fast you've got to be insanely punctual you have to literally have no not that you have not to have no pride but you realize that you have to realize that every time you open your mouth to you know and against going against someone like say jade weinberg went against somebody in the band a number of times on song decisions or something that shit builds up it really does and in those guys minds they're probably thinking shit we hired this guy to play drums or we, you know, and and not just like this one specific situation. I just think that um, if you know, if you're that guy in a in a, unless you're asked, if you're like, what is your opinion on this? Then you give your opinion. But if you're in a situation where you're just disagreeing with the songwriter that hired you, even you know, maybe you're taking advantage of the fact that you've been in the band a little while, you've gotten comfortable, you feel like more of a member of the band, and you can flex a tiny bit. And then that shit adds up before someone's just like, man, this guy is just too much of a fucking headache. We're going to get somebody else. Bye-bye. And that's what, and that literally happened time and time and time and time and time and time again. And it just is what it is, guys. The guy in the what? No, I don't even know what the fuck you just said. I am want to know what you just said. Oh, Jamie Josta wants us to tear it down. I'm not tearing it down enough. So guys, I got to start tearing it down. <laughs> tear it down now. Are you going to tear it down in there? You're not tearing it down. Are you guys tearing it down or is it too early where you guys are at? Are you guys tearing it down currently or is it maybe you're tearing it down later in the day? As an adult, like these lyrics are motivational and everything, but like it's just a little bit too demanding for me. You're asking me to tear it down like I'm going to have to schedule that. Self-respect. Yeah, these things are chunky as fuck. They sound great. They sound good with distorted bass. They sound good with regular bass they sound good with slightly driven bass we didn't get to cerberus today though tear it down we did get to the giveaway we didn't get to cerberus today and it is rolling into about that time folks uh we also tried out a few things today let's go over what we tried out real quick this is free you guys can go to soft tube right now go to soft tube right now go to go to soft tube right now too get there get the vca compressor this thing looks looks fun it looks like somebody like somebody like an audio file would have in their like nice fancy stereo on like a bunch of racks it's a an absolutely terrific little uh, compressor it sounds great pardon me little burpsies there buddies all right so basically this thing right here is awesome and i just i had it set on pace some pace <laughs> bass p style and it sounded great. Um, it adds a nice little bit of punch and warmth. You can set it however you like it. You can put it in the chain, depending where you like to compress your bass before or at the end. It's up to, really up to you. Um, it can be done both ways. Or in Billy Sheen's case, he does it both ways. He likes to compress at the, at the start and the end of the chain. That's, to me, that's maybe a bit much. But I mean, it all depends on what you need and your needs as a player. This thing is pretty cool and for free. How can you go wrong as our rule is around here if it's free and it looks cool there's nothing standing between you and downloading that installing it and maybe really enjoying it if you don't like it oh well it's maybe two minutes wasted of your life maybe five or ten absolute tops if you don't like it just hit that uninstall button and then it is gone and you can forget about it and continue on through the freeware life this thing is worth having a hundred percent the overseer we went over very briefly this is going to be the star of a show at some point soon. We're going to do a Tim Comerford tone talk. I don't know how 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 popular that's going to be entirely, but we'll find out. Uh, I find that that dude has maybe some of the best bass tones available. 
anywhere in in music some of the best distorted and just the best like he's got three or four different tones he uses on records and they're all terrific so uh why not do you have a little fun with that 100 percent free on this one again this is the tsc bod this is classic this has been around forever probably this has probably been around most longer than most of the people in the stream right now have even been using plugins or recording music at home this thing has been around for like 12 years now or 11 years a couple of different uis over those years uh but it looks great and uh, it's, it still does as it's supposed to do. You can use it on its own. You can use it in front of an impulse response loader. You can use it in front of an amp. There's all kinds of different applications to any SANS amp bass driver DI plugin. We didn't really use to get to the shoeless drive. And then I think that uh, we did it once before that Resington's pedal here is pretty cool for bass. So check it out. It's free. It's from WaveMind and you can use it based on kind of a tweaked out and tweakable uh, DOD 250 preamp pedal. And so go and grab it, Resington and Wavemind. And, my, and I personally would re really appreciate it if you went and grabbed it and let us know what you think of it for guitar or bass. We checked out the Black Ice Beta Gamma. We also checked out a little bit of this, albeit not enough of uh, GK Ampli Amplification 3 Pro. This is... Maybe not going to be where you parked your car for metal bass, but for anything else. This is an awesome plugin. Uh, I look forward to maybe using it in a different stream after I've had a chance to kind of get reacquainted and refamiliarized with it after a while away. As I like I said, I've been using basically just this plugin um, for the last while. Um, anytime I play bass at home, covers, playing along to things, uh, using it on albums on you know on demos etc um depending on the developer yeah this thing appears a lot so guys if you haven't checked this out check this out as well and we didn't get to the Cerberus bass amp today sorry bro but still a really really cool uh bass amp that you guys can get for pretty cheap that sounds pretty good and uh this wasn't supposed to get any love today but don't forget the neural amp modeler is free and it does bass and there are plenty of bass amp uh, profiles, captures out there that you guys can check out ASAP. And for my re um, end of the chain reverb here, I was just using a really, really small 6%, tiny, tiny, small, little bit of reverb in the back just to moisten things up and make them sound a little more exciting. Just so you, you guys don't have any illusions that, you know, this is kind of part of what anything I've been using. I just like to be straight up about it. And with that, we are done. Going to be back about 4.30 with a Doom stream. Can't wait. Going to be fun. Going to go watch some baseball for the meantime. And uh, guys, come back around 4.30. We're going to have another giveaway. Going to be giving away a cap pack. Stoke that Victor won uh, the uh, sticker and pick. Make sure you connect with me so I can get your address and ship that out to you, buddy. And uh, stoked to see who, who comes back for the Doom later and sees... How much we can do with that. I really, guys, I feel like we can do a lot with Doom uh, plugins in the stream to convince anybody that might not believe in the uh, their abilities in the Doom in the Doom world. Not saying that anybody needs to take a stage or show up at their band practice with plugins, but when it comes to recording demos at home, or, you know, stuff you want to show, you know, share with your bandmates, recording at distance. Um, even just trying to jam or practice with something. Say you're trying to learn something and you want to just learn it. You could learn it with headphones and a plugin instead of firing up a whole fucking rig and then irritating everyone in the immediate 100 yard vicinity. All right. So I think there's a lot we can do. We're going to do that at 430. We're really going to lean into this one. Okay. Let's really lean into it. Guys, let's show, do, see what you got for support. And I'll see you guys then. 430. Thank you so much. Now, my, uh, yeah, sorry, my challenge for you guys this uh, in this stream is just to go check this VCA compressor out. This is free. That is my challenge. Head over to SoftTube, grab this for nothing, and uh, let me know what you think of it. That is your challenge today. I will see you guys at 4.30, and then I will also see you guys tomorrow on Sunday uh, for some fun as well. Okay, uh, thanks so much for joining me. I will see you guys in a couple of hours, and uh, have a great day. If I don't see you, make sure you have a very relaxing day day a relaxing sleep depending on what time you're on your way what time zone you're in uh just and be well okay everybody just looking through the comments before we get out of here
Yeah, that's going to be great. Doom 30. You know what? Let's start the stream at 420 instead. Uh-huh. Wink, wink. All right, guys. I'll see you guys then. And uh, be well. Have a good time. Play on some plugins. Jam. Play, on, play some things. Be creative. And just generally enjoy life. We'll see you guys later. Cheers.